Hey everyone, welcome to the RC Groups podcast. We have a little delay today. It was technical difficulty. Okay, so basically what just happened is people are uh, getting the notification of the live feed, which I'll get going over here in my side window. Um, Jason said it sounded like I was in the bathroom at a sports stadium. And uh, so Jason, what I did is I jumped off. While Jason sat here, I, I went through the house and found every microphone I own. There's one missing, though. It's the original RC Groups mic that maybe you saw that I used to carry around, had a 20-foot cord on it. Do you remember that mm. little thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted. I couldn't find it. But anyway, I, I now have every microphone in a pile on the floor. And, J and Jason and I uh, jumped out, and I thought, this is simple. It's a simple thing. And it was a, a knob, which I've never touched before, on the control panel that said effects. And when I turned it off, everything started working. Ah. I, think I could right now turn it back on if I wanted to. <laughs> but I thought, I, I didn't, I couldn't, anyway, no one wants to hear about this. Anyway, that's why we're late. Uh, we have, as you can see, I'm surrounded by some amazing artifacts from the RC hobby. And I thought we would talk about those today. Some old, some new. I can't believe I got away with the Norman. Uh, yeah, I, I I thought. Are you delivering that to somebody, or is that is that yours? Mm -mm. I'll tell the story in a minute. All so right. I I have a story. Jason and I have multiple stories to talk about today. Um, one is some of the staff from the original Hobby Lobby from the heyday of Hobby Lobby got together at the field, and we stood around at our field and did that. Prior to that, me and Jason and Mike Hines flew a bevy of airplanes at the field. We can talk about that. And then the next day, uh, Lane from Lane's Planes, Lane Stair, Star, um, also from the Crash Cast, he said, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, just call me. I'll meet you at the field. So I, the next day, I met Lane there, and uh, I'll tell the story about Norman. And uh, then also the Piggy uh, is a part of the Hobby Lobby crew. And then the third day, I hung out with another guy. We'll talk about that. So let's start out with you, Jason. What are you doing? Well, I've been uh, playing around with this little guy. And how is it? Well, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. This thing's tiny. Yeah. So, you know, it's the it's the Indutrix Switch Air. And it goes from this little thing, how it comes out of the box, and you can pull the drone out and you know slide the rear motor pods out and then insert them in and take it back to a regular Indutrix quad if you want so it's kind of a two in one airplane but if you're getting this you're really going to want to leave it like this this is it's just kind of neat especially if you're an airplane guy it flies like a drone but you can drive it around your house it looks like it's flying like an airplane uh, so, you know, it's a toy, but it's, it's fun. We all like little toys. We all bought the air hogs, little biplanes and things when they came out. So I kind of liken it to that. It's, it's simple. It's easy. It's, it's unique. And it looks cool with the flying wing and you get a little bit more runtime flying it, you know, forward as the wing generates lift. Uh, but you can hover this and fly backwards just like a drone too. So it's pretty cool. I'm working on a review for it. I'm actually going to uh, video it today flying around my living room after the podcast so i've got all the batteries charged up and ready to go but it's gonna be pretty fun i actually have uh some photos we can take a look at and it's a uh this would be the raw footage before i do the review for the timber x so i think we should just jump in and talk about that so monday jason you were wrong by the way not you but the weather guy was wrong um it was beautiful weather Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but by Wednesday, the field was closed, so yeah. it didn't, didn't matter. It was a little bit windy. I sat there in the parking lot waiting for uh, the what flyer guy to show up, and I'll tell you why in a minute. It's not what you think, and uh, I was just sitting in the truck with the windows down, listening to the wind blowing through the trees. Mm -hmm. I don't know the last time I've done that. It reminded me of when I was a kid in Texas, and that was like all I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> there were Easy, three easier days, huh? Yeah, there were three <laughs> channels on TV, right? Yeah, there's a yeah. movie at one. I always remember at one o'clock in the summer, I go in and watch a movie, but uh, the rest of the time, I was just out in the pasture by myself because no one lived around me, and uh, I was completely anyway, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so, Jason showed up, and we'll talk about what Jason was flying, and uh, 
I'll find this folder real fast and see what if did we... I fly. What the what? Oh. It was really there for you guys. So I met Mr. Mike Hines out there. He's got uh, a couple of Horizon planes uh, for review. So we flew the new little uh, F-15 ducted fan jet, little 64 millimeter fan in it. And I got to fly it and it was pretty neat. We had to die. We had to greatly increase the elevator throw. It didn't have enough elevator for me. Um, so, but once we did that, man, it flew great, like a sweetheart, super solid, smooth in the air. I did some hand launches. The hand launches really surprised me how easy it was. Just throws it straight. AS3X is helping that out. And, you know, it's not crazy fast. It's not crazy big. It's just kind of a small, medium size, you know, foamy ducted fan jet. And I'm sure it's affordable. I don't know what the price is, but, uh, you know, it's going to fly really well if that's something you're into. But it's nothing, you know, like going to be like a $600 jet in this giant showstopper. It's just going to be good, easy, simple fun. I think hand launching it looked better to me. It definitely, well, he took, when I hand launched it, we had all the missiles off and the landing gear removed. So it was lighter and less draggy and it became much more nimble at, you know, as expected, but it was, yeah, a lot more fun to drive around with everything off of the airplane. So what we're going to do now is share this is always you never know if it's going to work all right let me wide open this thing so can you see that jason yeah hey we've got somebody in the channel currently on his way back to london aaron nad in the chat i just think that's cool he's watching from the the stinking channel the what the For channel what the heck's the a tunnel? underground underwater tunnel oh my it goes gosh from like get france to or something if i remember right, right. But I like I, that's kind of like my bucket, one of my bucket list things. I want to go, you know, drive through there and explore around. But one of these days. But that's awesome. He's watching from there. I don't know if I'm gonna this. I am not seeing my arrows to change. Anyway, this is the Timber X in the box. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there cool. it is. And uh, so then I kicked the box up just so the concept here in the review, as you can see what's in there. So there's the wing, and the big difference in this wing on the Timber X, if you don't know, is that it's shorter which makes it roll faster. And then the flap actually looks bigger than the dang aileron. And in my review, I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually provide the SPM file that will allow you to simply download the uh, SPM file for your transmitter and then upload it. And you'll automatically have the settings that the uh, designer had uh, to fly it exactly the way it was meant to fly. And so I'll show you a picture of these flap and ailerons being coupled. But of course, everything's pre-applied. All the stickers, all the servos are in there. Here's your wing. It's actually a very simplistic wing. And I've got to say, after the last few uh, Horizon builds, usually it's always super simple with one thing that you need to be aware of. I don't think there was anything special to note here. There's your receiver. And uh, you're really going to get a hyper overview of the review here. This will help me before. I haven't written it yet. So oh, nice. well, help me as well. Um, when you get it set up, you're going to have a wire harness there going to your flaps. And that means the flaps cannot be coupled with ailerons. And I thought, well, what do I have to buy another transmitter? No, you unplug the wire harness from the flaps. You plug one flap into six and one flap into channel five. And then you're like, what do I do with this extra plug? And that goes to your lights. And you simply plug that into your bind. But do that after, of course, you've bound everything up. Um, and then you can use the stock configuration and have the flaps running on two different channels. Here's the bottom. And I really want to brag so far on this landing gear. I'll show you more about that in a second. Um, the landing gear seemed well thought out, easy to put together and really takes a hit. Jason, do you have anything to say about that? Uh, nope. I'm reading the chat, so I didn't quite catch that. Okay. Okay. So uh, putting in the tail group was super easy. And interestingly enough, they give you a carbon fiber spar or a metal spar and the metal helps you get the CG back a little bit, which I don't know that I've ever seen anyone do that before. So that's mm -hmm. cool. Control horns, everything are pre-installed. Um, this is my biggest complaint. The only complaint I have at this time. And Jason, I was also thinking today, you know, I tend to feel like I have to get a review out as fast as possible, but this plane's been out on the market for a while. So yeah, I yeah. think I'm going to keep flying it 
and uh, feel more comfortable and actually get to it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. And, uh, and then write the review after that. I'm not going to wait like months or anything, but I'm not going to feel like I have to push out the review today. Yeah. Although so, I am editing the video over here. So the thing about this battery tray is, A, it's hard to get my hand into. B, uh, I put Velcro on the bottom because you must do that. We've all learned. And uh, if you do that, then the straps are hard to put on and it's on the bottom of the plane. So you have to pick the plane up, turn it over, open up the hatch, put the battery in, then put it back on the ground for AS3X. And all of that's a bit of the PIA. Yeah. If you remember when I was talking about it, when I bought mine, I, that was like one of the only complaints I had was pain in the butt battery thing. And I was like, they should do better on this. And not to take us off of the Timber X yet, but you know, Horizon released an, uh, an updated new version of the Carbon Z Cub today, which I was like, oh, love that airplane. That's awesome. And guess what they have? An awesome, you know, easy install battery tray uh, built right into it. So I'm like, yeah, maybe they'll start doing that and be thinking about those things more and more. Right. But I will say that this uh, battery bother isn't enough to even uh, – make you even think yeah more. I, I would suggest it does help i can do it inverted in one hand and, and then put one in with my other hand um but get something like one of those model stands like the cruising stand i reviewed a while back yeah or some kind of model you know stand where you can just stick it on upside down and you're not going to ding up the tail or the wings or anything on the ground or gravel depending on where you are and you can put your battery in and that thing flip it over let it let it uh initialize the gyros all that stuff and you're good yeah. to go and I leave the lid off while it's initializing and then I put it on after I'm done. I would also say that when you, if you just flip it over on a picnic table or something like I was doing, the surfaces on this plane don't seem to care. I didn't feel like I was scratching or dinging anything up. Yeah. So that's, and then uh, you don't have to rush that initialization either. Um, you can plug it in, put the hatch back on, take your time and it won't really do anything until you flip it over. It's upright and then still, and then it will do its initialization. So it's not I a big rush. Didn't, I did not know that. Yeah. Not like but in the old days, you had to hurry and like do it within two yeah. seconds or something. Like none of that. That's it's, it's all gone. Okay, I, I wasn't aware. Uh, the prop is. Uh, I'll talk. Well, I'll say it now. This is prop for four cell, four rail. You can fly it on a three cell. We'll talk about that in a second. But I but did you won't want to. Yeah, I chewed up this prop um, with my. Uh, I did a lot of flip overs. And I don't know if it's me or if I just need to grab more Ellie uh, as soon as I hit the ground, but I would say uh, go ahead and get some uh, APCs or something. And there's a big thread on this on RC groups, which I went in and everybody's talking about props and things like that. Mm. So here's more pieces out. Uh, there's your landing gear, your uh, uh, manual. Here's the hardware, which isn't labeled at all, but I'll also say that it once you uh, start putting things together, it's pretty obvious. And your wheels, which, you know, I tend to be a wheel replacer and these wheels look great. And then here's the first part of your landing gear attached that slides in there. And then you screw that in. I did not use thread lock this time. Uh, same thing for the other side. And then in the middle is a joiner. And that was a little tricky. I took it all the way apart, which I think is not the best idea. Um, it's it's on one side as you can oh, see. Oh, yeah, you have to get that spring. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. Then you Lock get the other that plastic the, keeper and screw it down. Yeah. And then ultimately you get this. And I will say I boinged it in pretty hard a few times and it didn't care. Also, the elevators are sometimes tricky. And there's your the steel piece that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. This was not tricky at all. Um, it snapped in, and not only did it snap in, as you can see here, I'm sure I took a photo. There's also a screw, so you can not only uh, hope that you got it snapped in correctly, you can put the screw in and feel good about it. And then here's just uh, showing you all the connections. There's the wing and then laying on top and everything's ready to go. And you just slide that in and lock it down in the back and it's hot. So um, I had, was sent a 3S, 2200 and a 4S and there's your lights, which are cool but tricky to take pictures of. I like the front lights the most. Mm -hmm. um, that's super simple. Nothing here out of the way. I didn't put the slats on. I'm real tempted to. Jason, do you know if you can take them off and put them on? Or uh, I haven't really looked at it because I just was like not going to play with them at all, in my uh, opinion. But it'll kill your aerobatic inverted performance. But it'll, it will allow it to fly, take off, do more stall kind of flying. 
better. So if that's your thing, feel you free. Do that. They're in there. Um, I'm saving mine. I have not put them on. Here's the two batteries that I was sent. And I did get good flight times out of there. I I don't know what my, I could go look. My transmitter set the timer for. It's usually mm -hmm. about four minutes or something. But even at, when the timer went off, I would land and have, uh, you know, 25% more battery. I would feel safely flying. So I guess I should go back out and actually get a number on that. There she is at the field. The build is simple. If you were at Joan, I was telling Jason, if you're at Joan all or Seth and you're like, I want to fly something, this would be the kind of airplane you could buy. And with a screwdriver, you could put it together out in the grass. Yeah. In my trusty DX nine. And uh, the, the, Jason, I had Jason fly it. He said no trim was involved. I did have to uh, trim the elevator just a hair to get it right. But I'm running two different size batteries, too. I, get, I didn't fly it straight enough, long enough to, to notice any trim issues. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, and we have video of that. And we'll show some. I was actually looking at my video. Um, you know, uh, when you have a guy like Jason, you want to have the best fly in the airplane to show it flying the best that it possibly can. But even my stuff is uh, is uh, mediocre as it was actually looked pretty good. I'm going to use a couple of pieces out of me doing the, the first flights and, and landings, and then we'll jump over and let Jason ring it out. But there's your flaps. We're talking really fast today. The SPM switch are the SPM. Well, we're going to be done in 10 minutes. We've got a, we got a half hour. Right, right. <laughs> the <laughs> SPM the way, file that I'm going to give you actually has not only the couple ailerons, but also the flap switch. And not only doesn't have a three-way flap switch, but it also does it at uh, a slow turn. Plus, it'll couple. This is all going to just be in a file. You're not going to have to do anything. Yeah. It couples the LE with flaps. And so when you flip it, you're definitely going to feel the airplane acting differently. And uh, mm -hmm. all that will be in the SPM. So there it is fully and down. Back to those slats, uh, E-Power said, once you, you have to glue them on. So once you do, you're going to have to cut uh, them off. To take gotcha. them off. Yep. Okay. I won't do it. Then. It'd be cool if you could try it. There's your ailerons uh, fully engaged with flaps. Oh. I called Jason and I was like, man, were yours exactly the same? And uh, he, and the, the, Jason didn't remember. So what I did, Jason, is I just went into my servos and uh, I would go full extreme one way and adjust it. So it was perfect. Mm -hmm. you know, full extreme the other and adjust it and did it on both sides and got them just right. And yeah, cause I didn't have there. I didn't have that file. It didn't exist. I don't think when I bought mine. So I, I had just programmed mine just from scratch, essentially. One so thing I probably that, made it even. What we did notice is, um, Somebody asked at the field, are you running higher rates than stock? And if I'm doing a review, I don't run anything higher. I uh, The review's done the way they send it or the SPM file is or just whatever Horizon sending it with. So when Jason was trying to put it into blenders on the stock high settings, it was falling out. And then I believe we flipped the switch to low settings, low rates, and uh, then it started sticking in that blender better yeah i think your i think your rates high rates are higher than my high rates and so it was i was used to making it do things uh, with high rates and it was right i was different. putting in too much uh deflection uh right. you know to get to it so you just had to feel it out but sure you can always use sticks you know you can always yeah not move the stick as much right <laughs> as as uh, david payne says if it's not doing what you like uh push the stick a different way <laughs> there you and go. That, that's a full rudder deflection right there. <clears throat> and I, one thing I'll say also, I expected a lot of coupling with this thing. You know, it's not a purebred 3D plane like I'm used to profile. But um, one thing I love to do is fly around just with the rudder and do really flat turns. Mm -hmm. And this thing did that really well. I, I don't think I was pulled in a lot of elevator when I was flat turning around the field. Yeah. And that pro tip, I still haven't tried it. But if you if you enable safe mode on these things... It uh, locks the bank angle at 90 degrees, so you could just peg the aileron stick over, hard over, and uh, just use rudder and fly it around in, in a perfect knife edge flight. Okay. So I was going to ask. I want to see how that works, but yeah. I was going to ask you if you do the safe, can you also have the full ailerons, or is that one or the other? Yeah, so safe is, would just be on. I, you know, there should be enough channels for that. Maybe I thought, maybe not. I, thought I read that it was a trade off, but oh, I, is it only a six channel? It's only a six yeah. channel. Receiver. Yeah. Ah, that's that, why I haven't gone in and done it. That's a super drag. If that's, I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. That's a bummer. I want yeah, both. I really want just want to throw like an eight channel receiver in there. But 
And the beauty of the roll rate for me is that roll rates get you out of any trouble. So if you, Jason's an inverted pilot all day long, here we are just looking at the gear and the tail wheel, which gave us zero problems. But Jason will fly inverted all over town. And uh, so I thought I tried it after uh, we did all our initial testing. And I was like, man, this thing flies great inverted. And the great part about a fast roll rate is you can always get out of trouble. Yeah. If you're like, which way am I going? Ah, you yeah. know, because there's no down. lack of control on anything with that airplane. Yeah. Or washout or anything. I didn't feel like there was any washout. Somebody told me. Okay. So there's all my photos. And then what we should do now is I'm not sure if it's going to work this way. We'll go over here and I am I'm going to try this video. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe it. So this is Jason tearing it up. So Jason, this is when I said, I think it was soft and I was right, but then I got it back in focus. Oh, I got you. This is raw unedited. Yeah. Yeah. This is Un only, RC groups uncut only seen once before. So this is 4S. Oh, let's talk about that now. The 3S, man, at three-quarter stick, it felt like the pack was out of juice. Yeah. <laughs> and the roll rate even was slower unless you're at full throttle. But I don't. I never feel comfortable in an electric plane flying full throttle all the time. I feel like I'm going to mess the pack up. So it became obvious very quickly that this is not a 3S plane. Unless you were a beginner, I heard them say that that this is not a beginner plane but i think on a 3s pack and low rates this is yeah it was safe enabled yeah. totally could easily you know not I, I don't know maybe not your very 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 first airplane like you've never done anything before but surely with limited experience you can handle it check check so here jack. Jack. get the video a little better right man he has got 59 flights on his that's awesome i'm only probably in my check, 20s jack. So there's your knife edge right there. And that is not with safe. That's just Jason doing it. It's kind of like a high alpha knife edge that you were doing. Yeah. And then I was, yeah, it wasn't perfect. 90 degrees check, the whole check. time, but yeah, it's, you know, whatever. Check. Feeling it out. It's kind of a slip. On yeah. Some of it. Which I'll go ahead and turn this off. Um, I, I don't know if it is. In fact, I was okay. I keep stopping myself because I can't figure out what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> People doing slips are always cool. And I realized when I was flying this thing, I was coming in across the runway at like a cocked angle. Mm -hmm. And I said, that looks like a slip, but I don't even know that I know how to really do a slip. Jason, how you do a slip? Oh, you just, you're using rudder and cross aileron and elevator and throttle. You use, you're just flying the airplane, but yeah, you could kind of get it on an angle. It's like sort of knife edge, but sort of, it's hard to describe really, but it's like you're sliding on ice sideways. It's, I mean, full scale planes do this all the time, for, especially if, if they want to land in a shorter distance or have to come in over an obstacle and land. It's it's just a way to add a lot of drag and uh, slow the plane down. And then you, then you level it out and, and land. But um, it's just fun to do with, with model aircraft too, because you can come in low and just almost drag the tail on the runway and just, and, just, and it just looks right, neat because right. it's just abnormal. You know, it's not a normal flight attitude. Crabbing in. So E. Powered says it, it hovers, but it crawls out of a hover, which he must be talking about on a three cell. Yes, yeah. Because I, I jumped, I did a touch and go and then jumped into a hover and then it did not want to like go anywhere else. And we had those guys putting up fencing. And uh, that's when I realized that is not a three S airplane. I don't think. Yeah. I not for 3d flying it's it, yeah. it'll fly into aerobatics and have fun and touch and goes and if, if that's all you have charge and you want to get a flight in by all means go for it but just don't expect the great 3d performance and pull out power you're going to see on 4s so i only had uh two 4s packs and we flew them both out and my third one i have to build a connector i always do that i bring that pack and realize it won't connect and uh so I started flying it on the three S while you guys were flying uh, your stuff. And all I did was uh, stalls and, and uh, using the rudder a lot. And it, that's when I was like, ah, I think I get this airplane. It's super relaxing and it's like a, just an easy park flying airplane. But then mm -hmm. if you stick the four pack, the four cell in there, 
you can really uh, rip it up and do whatever the heck you want. Okay. High altitude. And so, guys, it's three o'clock, so that's our show. Man, we appreciate you. Appreciate you watching. Yeah, we should have gone live where it was just me saying check, check. check. <laughs> yeah. Walking. That would have been so great. Okay, so after we flew, do you want to talk any more about the stuff you flew that day, Jason? Um, what else did I fly? Yeah, I mean, I brought was... my uh, EF Extra, you know, Hobby King speed plane. Flew that around, blast around the sky. Uh, what else did I fly? I thought Randy was coming. I brought my Mavic Pro. We did put up the Mavic for a little bit. Um, talked about the F-15 already for with Mike. So, so Randy Green was uh, in the live broadcast. He was in the live chat last week. And Randy was a sales manager at Hobby Lobby back when Jason and I worked there. And he is definitely a character. And so I had mentioned, hey, you guys should come down and fly with us. And so Randy came down on Monday. And <clears throat> I have to admit, Jason, we had flown for hours before Randy actually showed up. Oh, yeah. oh, I remember I was flying my snipe on the new x Light Pro radio. And I had it just a shoddy programming job um, because in the this version of OpenTX 2.3, they don't have global variables enabled, so it wasn't really the proper DLG setup. But thanks to unnamed people on Darcy Groups, which is the best place to get help, um, I secretly now have what I need on this radio to oh. do what I need to do that's not yet released, and I can't do anything other than that. But super happy um, that I can do that and get ready for competitions at the end of next month. So, booyah. So we got to spend a good long time out there flying a lot of stuff, flying out packs. I actually started charging things, which I rarely get a chance to do uh, in hopes of getting some more flights going. And so one more thing I'll say about the Timber X is it fits exactly in the back of my truck, which was kind of my hope. And yep. I'm going to get a photo of that and put it in the uh, story and make it kind of part of the deal. Yeah, there's a ton of space in there. I was looking for a truck video. So last week, if you'll recall, I believe we were reminiscing about the piggy and the funky chicken. And so Randy Green, now I got to say, I would never willingly get rid of my piggy. And I had two. I had one and then I rebuilt one a, a better way. And uh, I, I think the flood must have got it because there's no reason I would have sold it. But Randy Green uh, heard my call and he had a piggy and he gave me his piggy pretty amazing hey, hey, piggy, it, looks, piggy. it looks brand new really it's got a little uh yellow epoxy on there that's, that's the what, age aged process of epoxy that's what epoxy does so i was thinking i have certainly ripped my share of these off my page. oh heck yeah i remember that but i may put some uh some reinforcement like uh maybe bamboo that sounds kind of right. yeah you can slip some carbon rods in through there and then uh glue it and then slide those in but that might just rip more of the nose off. What do you think, Jason? What would you use now that it's uh, 15, 16 years later? Would well, you use better, epoxy? You're not going to rip those off anymore. What? So, well, now you're better and you're not going to crash. Yeah. Well, would you put a epoxy on here? Just like five minutes? It's EPP. I'd probably, I don't know. I'd probably use something flexible. Um, For the firewall? Goop or something. Yeah. Use some goop on the firewall. Shoe goo or something. I got shooting. It'll it'll uh it's solid but flexible enough that it won't, you know, Be cause rigid. problems. It'll and it'll stick good to that. I'm leaving the man. I like this uh the S little spinner, old school. school spinner. But this is a PJS 1000. This is kind of one of the earliest forms of outrunners that really performed. You know, we uh pe what people don't know is well, that we was the hot motor when I came to the Nash Bro for the first time and uh walked into hobby lobby and before i was hired there and you hooked me up with this branding sales manager and took get me on the tour but that was the hot motor was the pjs 1000 for 3d profile foamies if i didn't sell it i had a prototype 1500 and 1100 and uh that would be cool now check this out jason since i got you here you're an expert this is a jetty red that is non-lithium polymer compatible I uh, you, uh, what does it say does it say 
not bright enough. In I here. know the blue ones for sure were, but the reds, I you might be right about that. Because back when this airplane was there, we had lipos, but for some reason this was on an eight cell. This says brushless motors, but that's it. You don't see any, any – yeah, I would, just to be on the safe side, swap it out. Yeah. With uh, lipo-friendly. Speed controls are cheap these days. And then – the even cooler part is the battery, battery. That was probably 80 bucks back when we were selling them. Yeah. <laughs> your battery lived on the bottom here. Yep. And so the, I guarantee this thing never saw anything but NICADs. Yep. Ne never saw lithium polymer. So I, I mean, it was nickel metals. I'm thinking 3S 2200 all day long on here. Right? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. And then I bet a thousand dollars all these servos are perfectly fine. Yeah. And I took HS 55s. Yeah. And now, then I just have. Something strange you guys may have never seen before, unless you're yeah. unless you're old pilots. But there's there's like this, this long is, black thing hanging off the well, end of this. What is that's that? That's how you can tell the sex of the airplane. It's a male <laughs> airplane. We used to uh, our planes got so little that we would accidentally chop these off in hovers. Oh, and and Azar made that little Azar thing. You remember? Well, that? you know. So I I flew last Sunday with uh, L.A. Johnston for also from Hobby Lobby. So I flew uh, gliders with him Sunday in Tullahoma, and he was flying on a 72 megahertz radio. So he had the long antenna coming off his radio. I was like, man, I haven't seen those in so long. Is there a receiver in here? I bet it's Yeah, it's right there, and you're touching it. I uh, I had so many of these high-tech receivers, and I'm talking like dozens. Yeah, yeah. Azar's little light, that was called Litena. Litena. It yeah. made it a lot shorter. I still probably have an NIB Litena or two laying around. Uh, I guess if I put a spectrum in here, that doesn't have AS3X in it unless it's unless you have a spectrum AS3X receiver, which they make, but you probably don't have one unless you pull it out of an airplane that had it. I'll see. I don't know that I needed one back in the day when I flew this. I don't know why I need one now. Um, I'm I, this is definitely going to get flying. Um, I'm either going to paint something this weekend or get this going. So do some work on piggy. Now you got you also had the funky chicken. Oh, yeah. Well, let's talk about the funky chicken. So the piggy, this is a one of a kind. There's no piggies except for any of the survivors. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now, Jason, I was thinking that flying this at Seth and Joe and all might be kind of cool. It okay. would be, man, because I never even flew one of those. That was before my time. It was back when park flyers were the thing, and but I hadn't. I was still in North Carolina. So I got in big trouble. You may or may not, anyone in the live audience, know the uh, vice president of Hobby Lobby at the time was Eric Metzler. Um, Randy and I, Randy said, I know a hot smoking artist. He worked at Walmart. I was about to ask that. who painted that. Yeah, okay. And so we went to Walmart and he took forever to do this. And I got in big trouble with Eric Metzler when I got back to the office because I was gone so long. <laughs> and I said, dude, because we were leaving for Seth like the next morning and we yeah. were packing. And uh, I said, Eric, when everyone sees this funky chicken with this flame paint job, I believe it will have been well worth the time uh, that I took to do this. Yeah. And no, he, he didn't see it that way, but I believe it did. So I put on these cool eyeballs that I guess I found a, a hobby. Yeah, I mean, that is just a classic, awesome. We should definitely resurrect it. And fly. I mean, I'll, you almost don't want to fly it though. To, in case yeah, you tear it up. It's got, I put these funky teeth on here and then the head is held on with a rubber band. And that's a long can 400. Do you remember that? Super cheap and uh, would really do it. Yeah, it needs to get souped up with a better motor. Better. System. I don't know. But, I feel kind of weird. You know, it's just glued in there. I'd feel weird about taking it out. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I could. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'd almost not want to fly it though. Really. Yeah. I don't. How did they fly? Do you remember? Uh, docile and like a park flyer. Okay. So what happened to me and Randy that we we're talking about last week is Randy had a funky chicken and I had the piggy, and we were flying all around the runway trying to get photos. And the funky chicken came up behind me and his prop cut my uh, rudder off. And then when we got mixed up, I cut the head off of his funky chicken. <laughs> so the, the funky chicken and piggy ran into each other. It's a and lesson that, for farm animals everywhere. That, that brings us to the final. So um, I made a huge mistake once. I sold, I had Mojo 60 number one. 
It's the first ever made prototype and I had it for years. And then one day I felt compelled to sell it. Uh, after the flood, I did a lot of this getting rid of stuff. Mm. Anyway, but that guy crashed it literally a minute after he bought it. I watched yeah. him uh, fuel it up and I, I knew. But this is the first Norman. Uh, yeah, Norman, Norman. Oh, the first one? Well, this is the first foam Norman. So wow. I was a little confused too. They make the huge ones, right? The yeah. Oh, Norman's. there's a, yeah, there's several. Yep. So, so this is the foamy. So I actually got a kit. I said, look. I want a Norman. I think I want a Norman. And I saw this hanging up in the trailer. And so he said, I'm going to give you a kit and it takes three hours to build. And I, and he's like getting everything out. And I was like, listen, I'm never going to build that kit. I want the one hanging on your wall. I mean, if you're open to selling it. And so, um, I get, he acted like that. I wouldn't like this and I, and I should just build one, but I talked him out of it. <laughs> I love this thing. It's been through some things, huh? And uh, it's got smiley teeth on the front. I'm thinking I might sh uh, up the, up, <clears throat> update the Sharpie coating. It's got the Norman mounting pieces here. It says Norman back here on the back of the wing. Mm -hmm. And so this is number one. It also has lights inside, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it they had, look great at night. It had a super expensive ESC on there. And... Uh, I did pay some money for all of this, but I was like, dude, take that ESC. That's probably worth everything I've given you so far, you know? Yeah. So in fact, I took the money. Uh, I sold a little red airplane at the field the other day and I just had it in my wallet. And, uh, wheels are as big as your hands. Yeah. You know, and I was thinking I have big tundra wheels, but I don't think I'm going to change anything. No, they'd, they'd be too heavy. They, those are just super light, light, light foam wheels. So here's another one between the piggy, the funky chicken and this, what a bevy of interesting beauties, right? <laughs> the eclectic collection. Yeah. Jim T's hanger. I'm curious if I could get them all in the truck. I think you're right about the chicken. I think if the chicken ever went in, that would be that. Oh, that'd be sad right. day. But, but you know what? It's just hung in the rafters for 20 years. Play the bugle horn for it. What kind of life is that? It's true. Just one last, uh, maybe we should just, yeah, just let it straight and level and then just turn the radio off and just let it fly off into the sunset. And then not watch, just see where it goes. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. So that is all of my stuff. I'm working on this review, but you know, uh, Joe Nall is bringing that on our neck. I've got a Joe Nall report, Jason. Do you? I've got. This is quite a podcast. This looking piece of airplane wing. That I've ever seen. You should paint your car that way. So I got I did get my new two CX fives in the mail the other day. So I'm going through that process. It is shiny and gorgeous. So super pumped about that. But what's the Joe Nall report, man? Well, I called Mark, who uh I'm not sure what his title there is at Joe Nall, but I know that if I need anything at Joe Nall, I just find Mark. Okay. And, uh, I said, Hey, I want to make sure golf carts are ready. So Jason and I don't walk everywhere. Right? Yeah. Is that good? Yep. Golf carts are locked and loaded and hmm. I heard there's a new runway at the electric line. I saw a picture of that. I'm a little concerned that I didn't have, uh, any story on that. I guess oh, we'll have one next week. Yeah. Because I'm looking for something for you guys. Hold tight. Uh, you'll maybe like this. Uh, open with, uh, heck, I don't know. I've got a picture I want to show you. Oh boy. I'm trying to make sure that it's, uh, oh. and we will not be on the show next week, guys. We'll be at triple tree for Joe Nall. And I think Thursday is likely that they were doing flying giants t-shirts. Yes. Yeah, so that's what we're about to talk about. Okay. Uh, does she give me a back? Yeah, here's a back. So uh, I confirmed the golf carts, and then I got on the phone with our T-shirt people. Now, these are new T-shirt people, and that's super dangerous uh, in the world of T-shirts because you don't know what they're going to do, right? And so I said, are we ready? Is everything ready? And they said that they are finishing up today. I'm trying to find. I'm doing two things at once. 
One second. So I'll just stop talking. Um, yes, the t-shirts are ready. Yes, we're going to do it on Thursday. I believe the time traditionally is 11 o'clock. So Jason, it's on my list Monday, I believe. I'm going to make that post on Flying Giants and RC Groups, okay. including photos of these t-shirts. Oh, cool. And and uh, I got to call my man. Dang, I might have to call him today. Uh, they're going to drive in and bring them in. So I got to tell him where to put them. Mm -hmm. And and it doesn't look like we're going to get the crazy rain like last year. They said rain or shine. Did you say see that? Oh, they did say they're, they're having – well, you know, who knows. But I think right now – I mean, there's people there now in line at the gate like all the way backed up to the road waiting to get in. Uh, but when we're going to be there is Wednesday, sunny 76, light and variable winds, amazing. Thursday, 80, 5 to 10, sunshine and clouds mix. Friday, sunny 79, Saturday, sunny and 80. I mean, it's going to be amazing weather all into next week for Joe Nall. So can you see my screen, Jason? Oh, I can. There's so your shirt. Here's the front of the shirt. It looks kind of gray, but it, that's really a heather blue. Of course, you never know what you got until you put it on yeah. your back. But I'm in love with this design. Um, that's going to be great, man. I like it. Yep. And so that's the front. And then uh, what happened to the back? Uh, one second. Here's the back. And I'll do a zoom in on that. That's the front. Oh, you're right. Oh, there's my arrow. There's a banner. There it is. So the back is slightly different than the front, but it's bigger. It's got Joan all on the top and flying giants in the in the wings. And uh, it's one of my favorites. That's what yeah. I told Mark. You have to be there to get a shirt. You can't get it any other way. We can't ship them. We're going to get them all away at the show Thursday. I'm holding I'm holding one shirt. It's for the lady who approved the budget this year. There you go. She said, Jim, could I have a shirt? And I said, you most certainly can. Oh, yeah. So um, there's that. Then there's us running around on golf carts and taking pictures and uh, talking to people and taking in Joan All. And it's all happening. Yeah, man. I'm excited. It's a... Uh... Yeah, 20-year endeavor for me now. Crazy, man. There's people the same age as you. Hey, while we're here, let's talk about some news and exclusives. And uh, we, we'd be certainly remiss not to talk about this. So um, I was contacted by Horizon, and they said, hey, we want to do a conference call with you. And so there's a thread, and we can go look at that right here. And this was something Jason put together at Fall in the Nall, Nall in the Fall, Fall in the Nall. Yeah. And so it was about this prototype, and they were looking for input, which they never do at Horizon. And Jason uh, did the story, and that turned into how many pages? I want to say 12. Uh, around 12 pages worth of input. And then at the very end of the story, this is why you should watch the podcast. You get the inside scoop on what's going on. Uh, at the end, it said... Well, basically, there's more here, but basically someone said, since we uh, made so many suggestions, it would be great if you announced it here first. And so they called me to say, we want to announce it on Flying Giants and RC Groups first. And they did. And now there's actually a link. You can go check it out. But this was the first. Anyone had ever heard about this airplane was on our two sites. Yeah, that's and awesome. That, and that's why I put Flying Giants and big letters on these pictures. Not that it matters now because they're everywhere. And uh, let's go see some more news. Of course, we know that Jace the Ace started his company. Did you know he sold out of every plane he had, Jace? That's uh, incredible. Good for him. Yeah, he'll have more after Joe Nall. I contacted him yesterday to talk about that. We have cell plane stuff. The Horizon Hobby event is our next event after Joe Nall. So uh, everyone that has posted about this seems very excited about it. There's a lot to be seen and done. And... Uh, I've got mass emails finally going out and things seem to be popping. I haven't heard anything from the text about that. So I'm hoping to be able to just keep emailing like I used to in the old days. Yeah. Excellent. All right. 
Jason, are you prepping for Joe Nall in any way? Are you I'm getting anything? Right? I'm a prepper. I'm a prepper. I'm not sure what I'm going to bring to fly yet, but I definitely I'm, I'm still waiting on some parts for my new DLG, so I won't have new DLGs. I may bring my old snipe, but I may bring my big neutrino four meter. Who you never know. I haven't decided, but the weather looks great, so you know we're going to be there. We're going to have all kinds of stuff. A lot of coverage we're going to have to do, but a lot of working and a little bit of playing, hopefully. Yep. I'm just bringing pants. I think that's important. And uh, camera and two cowboy hats. Uh, maybe not. If I'm traveling in your vehicle this time, maybe I'll just bring one. I always bring a backup because can you imagine? What if I didn't have one? Oh, man. We'd have to go find one. Yeah, that ain't easy. It's the country. It's South Carolina. There's got to be hats around there. I bet. I bet. Uh, uh, jo uh, Bob Sadler would uh, hook me up if I really had to have a hat. You know yeah. what? I could bring Jason. I could bring my giant cowboy hat. Have you seen my giant cowboy hat? I uh, probably not. Can you talk for about the thirty seconds? Thirty seconds? Oh Maybe my gosh! Sort of right. Somebody time me. Oh. What am I going to talk about? So, yeah, I am going through the programming on the X Lite Pro. And gosh, there's a lot to learn, especially for DLGs. But uh, Mickey Monell, I think is his name. He put together this uh, PDF guide that basically walks you through programming on a on an on a any OpenTX radio, I guess. But he walks you through kind of what everything does, what the screens mean, the thinking behind how it works. So I've been reading through that and it's really helped me to understand the radio more. Cause if you just go in and start playing in the menus, you just really have a hard time trying to figure out like what does what or why. And there's so many ways to do like the same thing. And that guide it's on RC groups in the, in the hand launch glider section. Um, if anybody wants it, you can PM me, I can send you a link if you can't find it, but uh, really helpful for any programming uh, not just DLGs, but it's specific to that. So, dang, that's a big hat. What do you wow, think? Wow, man. The main line. I mean, that, that'll keep the sun off you for sure. I need to get a little, I need to get this front end worked on. <laughs> so, I saw this in Mexico, and uh, I wasn't sure it would make it back in one piece, but I, I thought this is the coolest hat in Mexico that I've ever seen. <laughs> What do you think? Is it a must? Do I have to take it to Jonah? Uh, it's up to you, man. I, it'll definitely keep you from getting sunburned. Yeah, I think I have to take it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be wearing one of my face mask shields probably at Jonah just to not get my nose so destroyed. I think this will be like my uh, noontime demo hat, even though it will block thirty people from seeing the show. Run around and get with Bob and hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you can be like, I don't, know. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but there's an old air show. Um, bit where they're doing an announcement at it, and, and this country guy kind of walks across holding some moonshine or something. And he like gets in a cub and he does like this air show and he flies around and acts crazy like he doesn't know what he's doing. It's a whole like bit for the air show, but you could kind of do that with somebody's RC plane. It's, I think it's called the drunk pilot. The drunk pilot, yeah, it's pretty funny. You could actually steam a hat like this. I mean, it got this shape somehow, yeah, add some CA to it. I need to get the tip. Place, you can put some uh, some uh, clear coat covering I, material. I have to drive real slow in the golf cart, though. <laughs> I wonder if this would even fit in my red truck. After the podcast, I'm going to go sit in the red truck and see if I can drop it. Well. Make a kite out of it. Right. Maybe I can fly. I do like the flight test, guys. Will <laughs> this hat fly? Oh, you can totally make a drone out of that hat. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I could like have a hat that flies to me when I need it. That, well, if I lose one, we just send it three miles back to me. Oh, that's funny. Mm, I need another yeah. one. Of these ones. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all, it's Thursday. I have been at the field every day for three days straight, and uh, which is it was pretty nice. Uh, now I'm looking forward to simply putting that airplane in the back. And now I'm pretty sure both of these birds will fit in the back of the truck as well. Yeah, yeah, you're set, man. All right. Well, cool. I appreciate you. Yes, Al. 
Thanks to all our live viewers. Um, we will be at the Knoll next week, as Jason already said, and we will be uh, running and gunning. Please stop us if you see us. Many times after that show, somebody will say, you look so busy. No, no, I might, I might be busy. It might be a fact, but definitely uh, make sure to say hello. That is the best part of the show. You sit here by yourself at a desk behind monitors all day. So when you go to a show and actually meet the people that you're actually working for, um, it makes it all worthwhile. That's right. I told corporate that this morning, Jason. I ah, called in and I said, the greatest part is shaking hands and meeting all the people. Mm -hmm. It really is. Got it right. All right, y'all. Simmer down now. Uh, Joe Nall coming up and we'll be going down. Yep. Recap show and well, yeah, I don't know. I'll be traveling again on Thursday after that for the Mid-South Soaring Competition at Triple Tree the week after Joe Nall. But maybe I'll pull over and find some Starbucks Wi-Fi or something and do a show with you. All right. All right. Cool, y'all. Thanks for uh, joining us live. And if you hadn't hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and do all the thing that those millennials tell you to do. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. RC Groups does not endorse any millennial advice. Millennials are just like any other person, except they're different. <laughs> millennials aren't like other people. Wow, we're bad mouthing a whole generation. Oh, man. We're still alive. No. Oh. Bye. <laughs>